Imagine a force so powerful that it bends the very fabric of space and time. A place where the laws of physics as we know them cease to exist, and the boundaries of our understanding are pushed to their limits. This is the realm of black holes. When we think of objects such as black holes, we tend to think of objects like we see in movies like Interstellar or Gravity, where you have these really, really powerful objects with infinite gravity at the center and these infinitely dense objects at the singularity. However, the problem that arises is when we try to describe these singularities with the modern physical laws we have. We can't actually describe it, but there is another way. Removing the singularity altogether. This is what Professor Akbarish and his collaborators at the University of Tabriz attempt to do in their paper titled Accretion Disk Around Regular Black Holes. Through the paper, they describe how changing the effective mass function, something that describes the structure of the black hole through its mass, leads to different distributions of the singularity. In Hayward black holes, for example, a dynamic mass function is introduced, meaning that it allows for the inclusion of effects such as tidal forces and the avoidance of a central singularity, making it a more realistic model for certain astrophysical scenarios. Bardeen black holes, on the other hand, incorporate the concept of electric charge into the black hole solution. Unlike the Hayward black hole, it still retains a singularity at the center, but exhibits a non-linear electromagnetic field, leading to unique features such as the existence of two event horizons and a regular, non-singular interior. The most uniting feature of all three black hole models is that they are all solutions to Einstein's field equations. However, the model can be simplified to an even further extent. One of the most fundamental aspects of classical mechanics is the beautiful ability to write any Lagrangian or Hamiltonian in terms of a one-dimensional effective potential. This is because many of the generalized coordinates in the system can be written in terms of a conserved quantity and something else that changes throughout the system. The most common example of this that we've all seen is the idea of how you can write the energy of an orbiting star around a, another star, like in some sort of binary system, in terms of just the radial component. But the beautiful thing is that you can also apply this to point particles orbiting black hole accretion disks. Through Noether's theorem, it becomes possible to rewrite the Lagrangian of an orbiting body in terms of only one generalized coordinate. This tactic is exactly what the paper employs to plot the effective potential, basically what a point particle would feel, as a function of the radial distance away from the center of the black hole. One of the most interesting things about the plot shown in the paper is how the different mass distributions change the bottom of the potential well, whilst also shifting the location of the ISCO, the innermost stable orbits, shown as dots on the figures. This is also the effective minima of the potential well, since no stable orbits can exist beyond this point. It seems as though removing the central singularity allows objects to stray closer to the center of black holes. From this, one can use temperature-luminosity relations to derive the temperature as a function of the flux for a given radius in the accretion disk, something that is related through the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. Finally, the paper concludes by discussing the mass-energy conversion rate in the accretion disk as a function of k, the energy per unit mass, for any type of black hole. This was derived using the mass-energy equivalence principle in conjunction with the virial theorem. The question you all might be asking me now is, what's the use of all of this? We've looked at different Hayward and Bardeen black holes with different singularity distributions, with some not even having singularities in the first place. So is there any sort of benefit this analysis can provide to humanity in the future? Well, the most important aspect of this paper comes from the idea of energy conversion around the black hole accretion disk. And if we look at how humanity progresses, we know that the energy scales that dominate humanity's technological growth grow exponentially over time. So what does that mean? Well, in the future, we're going to need a lot more energy than we have now. The Kardashev scale, proposed by Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, is a hypothetical framework for measuring a civilization's technological advancement based on its energy consumption. It's divided into three types. Type 1, harnessing all energy available on its planet. Type 2, controlling the energy of its entire star. And Type 3, harnessing the energy of an entire galaxy. 
As civilizations progress, their energy needs increase exponentially. One potential future avenue for energy is through black holes. The mass energy conversion rate of black holes, as theorized by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, suggests immense energy potential. Harnessing this energy could sustain humanity eons into the future. Whilst the technology to achieve this remains speculative, it offers a glimpse into the possibilities of our distant needs, where we may draw upon the most powerful forces in the universe to meet our energy needs. As humanity rapidly progresses, we must continue to stress the importance of sustainable energy sources. Not only do black holes provide an avenue for essential development to the field of physics, but they also serve as a gate to the future. I think one of the most beautiful properties that black holes exhibit is the sense of unification and equality they instill into the universe around them. Now you might be thinking I'm crazy, how could something that rips everything apart and destroys everything in its path instill a sense of equality around it? And you realize that the sense of equality comes around when you look that anything that goes into a black hole turns into one thing at the end. And you realize that everything is just energy. Whether it's big or small, strong or weak, whether it's a king or a peasant, everything is energy. And to sum up this beautiful experience of the unifying force of energy that dominates the universe and how black holes turn everything into one, I think there's a really beautiful poem that can describe this experience. Before my soul amongst the infinite and finite, the twinkle of sizzling sights draws in the nectar of life. Churning, expelling, each soul begins to ignite. Endless battles dominated by ego and light. What is ending? What is beginning? Enigmas become opaque. The passionate are placated, whilst the listless are liberated. It is indifferent to the tune of despots and dictators, roaring as it quakes. Material, causal, astral, all are captivated. Time bows to no tune, except when the tune precedes time. Dances of gravity mold existence, from matter to light. What lies beyond, an experience immeasurably sublime. Tremulous steps toward the void, acquiesce without a fight. Eternity is the cosmic illusion, an entropic dance of bliss. Darkness rules salvation, appearing fragile like a kiss. But the breath of the supreme absolute remains hidden from desire, like a blanket of ignorance coating a smoldering fire. Who hides this from me? Why shun, my love? The artificiaire, of course, sly yet mistakenly pure like a dove. Indra's jewels pervade cosmic dissonance, reflecting oneness into all. Millennia turn into eons as I rapidly fall. Suddenly, I realize, I am supreme. In fact, it is not me, it is we. We are both above and below. We are saints and sinners. We are light and dark, hot and cold, quirks and spinners. We are both delighted and destitute. We sense and sedate. We are the bitterness of nectar that comes from fruit. We are destiny and fate. A breath in, a breath out. That is the only truth we know. What is our role? Why, see for yourself through a black hole.